Okay, welcome back to Just Daff It. Daff, you want share I give. I stopped giving for a long time since Adam Sex gets in. I missed Kedushin. And the first 24 Daff in, in Mesech is Baba But I'm back and better than ever. Got my cool hat over here. Um, <laughs> um, I did not stop my YouTube channel, but I did stop uh, giving a Daff Yomi share. But now we're back. I'm a. Uh, are you proud of me that I'm getting that Yomi share sure again? She so said, do what makes me happy. All right, so there you go. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing what makes me happy. If tomorrow I decide I'm not happy giving that Yomi share, I'll stop getting that Yomi share. But <clears throat> let's get started. Um, I'll tell you the truth that it's hard to be away from learning that Yomi. There's a certain uh, joy a person gets from learning Gemara, from learning the Talmud. Um, I miss that. It gives you stability in your day. It makes for nice learning with a good coffee. And it really um, connects to your soul, you know. I haven't felt my soul in a long time, my neshama. And you find it with with some, some Talmud, with some Torah. Um, it's hard to live without Torah, it really is. I'm happy to have it back in my life. So for those people who never tried it before, I should try it. Because it really um, adds something to your life. It really does. Um, I also noticed that with Jewish music also. There's a difference. Jewish music is not maybe as good technically as non-Jewish music, but the Jewish music warms your heart a little bit. Warms your soul. Okay, um, let's get started. The bottom of Kavdalam and Base 24B, the art scroll over here. I prefer the smaller art scrolls. I used to have a whole set I ordered in Israel, but now my father has a set of the bigger art scrolls because this is harder for him to see, so he wants the, the bigger ones. Um, so that's what I have over here. The big edition. <laughs> um, let's get started from the bottom of Chav Dalam and Beis 24B, the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Shara Mazik Rosh Haniza. Of course, I hope to give after this shir, even with Ben Sion. If you follow it, I give an Ian shir, even Ian shir on the daf. Um, very interesting. Um, tells you a lot about uh, the inner workings of the daf and the inner workings of my mind because I have a lot to offer. Mishnah says, Shara Mazik Bashus Hanizak Ketzad. The discussion over here is about whether um, a bull. Now, a bull, obviously, it doesn't happen. People don't own bulls. Only farmers own bulls. But the short could be a car or something like that. Think of it like that. Short of Mazik Rishus Hanizak. If a short goes and it goes to someone else's property and it gores, Ketan, how much does it pay? Nagach, Nagach, Nashach, Rabat, Bad, Risharabim, Mishalam, Katinat, Rishus Hanizak. So everyone agrees that if it did it in a public dom domain, in the street, a public street, so if it gored or it pushed or it bit or, you know, basically sat down or kicked, those are all expressions of Karen. I have learned Baba Kama before, but people who are learning Daf Yomi are familiar with Shane, Karen, Shane, and Regal. That, you know, Karen is, what we're talking about, these are five expressions of Karen, which is goring, which is intent. We'll talk about that more even then. See, on the intent of the animal is to gore, so it's the damage to her. As opposed to Shane and Regal, Shane is it's eating food that it likes to eat. It's not doing it necessarily with Kavana. Regal, while it's walking, it just happens to either kick stones or actually come in contact with the foot. Those are things which are unintentional. So what's the rule? What's the law? How much do you pay if the, 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 the bull gores in a private domain the first time? Obviously, if it gores three times, even in the public domain, you have to pay Nezik Shalom, the full Nezik. What's the halacha? What's the law? Uh, so if it does those five things, what if it does it in another person's domain where Shane regularly you pay the full amount, pay for full damages? So what would be the din by Karen? He says, just like Shane Regal, you pay Nezik Shalim. The Chalmomrim, the Chalmom say, Chalmom say, you pay half, just like you pay in Rishorabim. And the halacha, we're going to see a chord to the Rabbana. I'll talk about exactly what Rabbi Tarfon and the Chama are arguing about practically. It's a really important machlogas about the idea of Karen. What exactly is, the Gemara always says Karen is because of Kavana, because of intention. I'll talk more about that 
and liabilities and try to connect it to everyday life because it's important to note uh, the Jewish system of monetary law. Um, I believe in it. I'm a big believer in it. And um, we'll talk more about that going forward. Um, <clears throat> so what's that lot? Our phone says, full, you pay full. I'm going to say, I'm not a retired phone. Our phone says, I'm not a retired phone. I'm not a retired phone. Shane and Regal are different. Shane and Regal, in a public domain, you don't pay anything, right? Show Potter. Hit my lamb, just like Shalom does a Shalom. However, in a private sphere, in a private domain, you pay the full amount. But Karen, you're already paying in the public domain. You're paying half half of the damages. Similarly, we should be stringent with it. To be at least like Shane and Regal, to pay the full amount if it gores in a private domain. Amru Lost, the Rabban said to him, Tarfon, Dayo Lavomin Adil Yos Kenidon. This is an expression the Gemara is going to talk about in this daf. Dayo Lavomin Adil Yos Kenidon. I mean, you want to, when, you, when I make a call of Homer and I say, right, Karen is worse than Shane and Rego because even in the public sphere, you're paying, you're paying half damages. Certainly, right, in the private domain, you should pay the full. Damage, right? However, they say dayo. They're upon and always as much as possible try to invoke this thing. We limit the kavachom as much as possible. Because who's to say? Maybe Karen has his own set of laws. Maybe Karen, maybe Goring is not like Shane Regal. And even in a public, in a private domain, you only pay half nezek. So they invoke dayo. Just like Sharabim, you only play half. Also, you maybe only pay half in the, in the private domain. So Amar Lehem, we said back to them, Afani. So apparently they were refuted. The Gemara, I believe, tomorrow, the next Dafa, they talk more about the the two arguments. They have one argument, which was more easily refuted by the Rabban. And then he says, I'll make a second Kalachoma. Afani lo adon tapa chaf ham and alaf 25a, lo adon karen mi karen. Ani adon karen mi regal. I'll learn karen from regal. Umabam akmo shahikal ashen. The Alha Regal, Bishorabim, Hikmir, the Karen, right? He's going to do it based on not Shane Regal, but in the places, right? In the place, right? What what place are we talking about? The Sharabim in a public domain. Shane Regal, you're exempt. Bishorabim, Hikmir, the Karen, the Karen. In the public domain, Karen, you pay half damages. Makom Shahikmir, Al Shane, Al Regal, which is an Isaac. In a place where we were stringent on Shane Rego in the private domain to pay full. And on this Janakh by Karen, certainly by Karen, we should be more stringent and you should pay full. Amrulo, again they said to the Again, invoking the same machlokis over here. We apply Daya as much as possible. We don't say Kabak Homer is just as much as we want. If you have proof. We have proof enough to say you'll pay something. We don't know what the din of regular is in a private domain. The most we can say is chatzin nezay because we have proof that in a private domain you pay chatzin nezay. So we can learn from shame of regular or learn from the private domain that you'd also have to pay. To pay the full amount, that's not so clear. They're going to limit that. So it comes out at the end of the, the Mishnah, which is really the big machlokas over here. What do you pay for Karen in Rosh Hashanah, in a private domain, do you pay chatzin as a coin of one, which is the halacha, or do you pay like a retired from said as a shalim? I'll talk more about the intricacies, what they really are arguing about um, in logic. What are they arguing about? I'll explain the idea of Karen. We didn't hear any of them seeing the first twenty-four blocks, so I'll fill you in pretty quickly on what Karen really is, because a lot of the twenty-three first often talked about Karen. Let's start the Gemara. The Gemara says retired from Leisle Dayo or retired from. He doesn't hold of Dayo. Va Dayo del Raisa here, the concept of Dayo, which is basically a subcategory of explaining Kalva Um It's from the Torah. How do you know it's from the Torah? Tanya, we have Raisa, Medin Kalva Homer Ketza. How do you make a Kalva Homer? Part of the, the structure of a Kalva Homer, part of the infrastructure of a Kalva Homer is as follows. Vayomer Hashem, where we learn from? Vayomer Hashem, Moshe, Vavia, Yarok, Yarak, Ufana, Allah, to call him. Shivas Yomim. Kalva Homer Lashkina Arbasar Yom. Aladayo Lavamina Din Liot Kinido. We learned from 
when Miriam, Miriam said Lashon Hara against Moshe Rabbeinu, and she got Saras, she got Saras in, I believe, Parshish Baal Oscha. Um, she got Saras. She got um, a pretty severe uh, illness. Um, how long was she ill for? So it's clear from the Torah, it was only seven days she was ill for. So the point they're saying over here is that Hashem was saying to Moshe, Moshe was pleading that she not get sick. And Hashem said to Moshe, if if her father, her father would spit in his daughter's face, thought, Dad, don't spit in your daughter's face. <laughs> but Hashem could say these things. Um, she would be embarrassed. She'd be very embarrassed for seven days. Certainly, if you made Hashem angry, the Shekhinah, by saying Lashon Haro, against Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was an Ebed Hashem. He was very close to Hashem. He was close to being Hashem, the closest person ever to Hashem, until he crossed over the Jordan and became Yoshua. <laughs> I'm just joking. For those who got the joke, you got it. For those who didn't, that's a joke. <laughs> um, so he was very close to being Hashem, very close to being God, to, to being close to God. So, Certainly, when you embarrass the Shechina, you should get 14 days. But you can't just jump multiply it to 14 days. So we go with seven. A father spitting in his daughter's face is seven days. So if you spit in, if Hashem's spitting in your face, Hashem is angry with what you did, also seven days. So you see a Brisa over here, a Brisa which we believe in. We believe in Brisas, at least they were brought in the Gemara. They have a legitimate source, they're brought in the Gemara. So Dayo is, is, is something everyone has to deal with. So how could Rabbi Tarfon avoid Dayo? So the Gemara answers, the says, The Gemara says he does hold of Dayo. He says certain times a hold of Dayo, right? If after you make the Kava Homer, you've learned something new, so you can invoke Dayo. But if the whole concept of Dayo takes away the whole thrust of the Kalva Homer, so then you can't use Dayo because then you've excluded the law of Kalva Homer, as he's going to explain in a second. Hasam, how do we see this over here? Hasam, Shiva, the Shekhin, the never says anything what would happen if Hashem, so to speak, would spit in someone's face. It's not written about. Asa Kalva Homer, I see our boss stars. Therefore, you make Kalva Homer, father spitting in his daughter's face is seven days. So Shekhin, Hashem, would be at least a double. Right? Because Moshe, Yoshua plus Moshe equals <laughs> equals full. Full God. So, um, so, there you have 14 days. Awahacha Asadayo Afik Shiva Oki Shiva. Right? And therefore you can invoke Dayo. Like the Brysa says, Dayo is a legitimate thing. And take away seven days. She's left with seven days. She should get seven days. There, it says Chatzin Nezik. We already knew about Chatzin Nezik. Chatzin Nezik is what we know in the first 23 dots, and they have sources, all the sources, for paying Chatzin Nezik. It's Psukim in the Torah, they pay Chatzin Nezik. It's verses in the Torah. So, if you use Dayo, so there's no Kava Homer at all. So that's what he's saying. Oh, he should have a hot Katsin as a sieve. Asa Kava Homer, I see Katsin as a Kakrina. Vinasin as a shaver. E Daraj Dayo. We already know. We know this Katsin as a. So the whole point of the Kava Homer, at least from Shane Regal or from the public, excuse me, from the public domain, has to teach us something new. So you have to teach us Nezek Shalom. Otherwise, you lose everything. By spinning a face was a completely new concept. But the Pesukah already talked about Chatz and Nezek. So the Kabbalah has to wear something, wear something to make an Nezek Shalom, like Rabbi Tarfin says. Either Rash Dayo, Afrik, Le Kabbalah Homer. If you say Dayo, then you ruin the whole Kabbalah Homer. Rabbana. What's the Rabbana's retort? Shiva de Shechina Ksivi. The Rabbana say as follows. Seven days of the Shechina, that's not something new. It was already written in a different pasta. Tisagir Shivas Yamim. It says, one of those Pesukim, it says Tisagir Shivas Yamim. It's talking about a general pasta over there. It happens to mention it 
not directly, but indirectly, he saw Yeshua as Yom. So we know about being withheld from the group of the camp of the Israelites, the camp of Yisrael, for seven days. Rabbi Tarfon, what does he do? Ahuti Sagir Darshin and Dayo. He says, no, that's the whole source. The whole source for Dayo is this. That's where you learn. Tisagir, that's learning. That's the source of Dayo. I've learned in the Bryson before. Rabbana, Tzivkra Achrina, Atisagir Miriam. No, he says, there's two, it mentions Tisagir twice, even though the second Tisagir doesn't say Shiva's Yavin. The Rabbana feel that's sufficient enough, so the second Pasuk is extraneous. Rabbana Tarfon, Rabbana Tarfon, Ahu Da'afilu Ba'alma Darshin and Dayo. What does Rabbi Tarfon do with the second Vati Sagir? He says that not just by, by the case of Moshe Rabbeinu and, and Miriam, but all through the Torah we say Dayo. Because why? You might think, even though normally when something in Memat Singh, if something exists in the Torah, Bryce tells you Dayo, it just, we normally just say it applies elsewhere. But you might think, not in this case. Why not? Because maybe only Moshe. Moshe was a very esteemed person. We have to worry about his respect. So therefore, you'd say Dayo. And Miriam can only be withheld seven days, not full, full 14. Maybe not elsewhere. Kamash Malan, therefore, you need to say it twice. I'm going to leave her a Abaye. My says to Abaye, Baha hai tana lo darish Dayo. Ba'afa gav lo mafra kavachoma. We actually find a Tana. That he doesn't say Dayo. Right? Ritarfan says, right? According to the Rabbanon, you say the Kavachomer as much as you can. According to Ritarfo, sometimes yes, sometimes no. And now we're going to bring a third opinion that Darshan does it all the time, even more than Ritarfo. The Darshan is the Kavachomer the fully all the time, never invokes the limitation of Daya. Even though it doesn't, when the Kavachomer, even though we would have learned it from somewhere else, he's not invoking Daya. Right? This is trying to refute what we said before. We're trying to say before that Ritarfon sometimes yes, sometimes no. Now they're gonna the one's gonna bring in a Brysa, which seemingly a third opinion. What is that opinion? The Sadi, the Brysa says that a Brysa, carry Bizav Minayan. How do you know that a Zav, a Zav is someone who has a seminal mission? Their semen and their sperm, um, two different things which emanate from a man. The Zav is basically the semen. And that's basically what it is without the sperm. So that's a zav. Carry is the sperm. So um, they come from different places in the male organs. Go look in your Google it or go to biology class. That's in a zav and a ball. Carry. So how do you know carry was out? Zav was out someone who just sees semen without the sperm. Um, so a zav is tummy. It could be t if he saw it three times, he'd be tummy for seven days. And now, he, while in the period of seven days, he sees Kerry, he sees the sperm. They look differently. Minayan. How do you know that's Matamian? Because certain aspects of Kerry tumor, of sperm, make him actually more Tame than Azab. They have different laws. Vidinu. How do you know that the, the, the stringencies of Kerry apply to Azab? It's logical. Matar, Bitar, Tame. Bitame. Tame, Bitar, you know, Din, Shihei, Tame, Bitame. Um, if he's Tahar, he's not a Zav, right? Um, and he sees Kari, right? Um, so he's Tahar from... Tahar Bittar means he sees Kari. He's not a Zav. Tahar Bittar, if he's a, a Zav and he sees a Ziva, a, a Sivan emission, he's Tahar. Tahar Bittar, you know, Din Jihei Tahar Bittar? Tahar. Tahar Bittar. You know, Din Jihei Tahar Bittar? Right? Or if you're a Torah person and you see Kari, which is Tame, for sure you're going to become, you know, the stringency of a, of a, of a person who sees Kari. Um, Certainly, a Tame, a Zab, who sees a different tomb, a Kari, it should apply to them, all the stringencies. And therefore, we learn that a Zab who sees Kari, he has all the stringencies of a Baal Kari. Both in regards to carrying something and also touching something. Touching something is not such a stringency because if you touch something in your tummy, you always make it tummy. But the unique stringency of carry is that even if you just um, carry something without directly touching it and move it, that makes you tummy, makes the object tummy. Bamai. 
the wise is true. Nema ahani kava chomer lemaga ahani daya lafuke masa. Maybe the kava chomer. Let's say daya over there. Kava chomer, right? A tummy person. That's the most stringent. He's a zab. He sees carry. Let's make the full extension. But then we'll say daya. Maybe only touching it, but not carrying it. Vichitema lemagal itzra kava chomer. Sure, losing the place. Vichitema lemagal itzra kava chomer. Maybe you'll tell me for maga, for touching it, you don't need a kava chomer. Delo gara mi gavra tor. Right? Why should a tummy person be worse? If he sees sperm, he sees sperm whenever he sees a sperm. Right? It's the riff. It is needed. Sagdai tachamina mikre lilaxiv. It says by sperm, it's the happenstance of a night. Misha kario gorim lo. This is an extra Pasuk. Specifically, why did the Pasuk single it out? It has to be the Tuma of Kerry, the Tuma of Sperm, has to be someone that his Tuma only came, he became a Tommy person on account solely of the Sperm. Yatsa Zesh ain't Kerry Gargalo. As opposed to someone who's a Kordia Zav, who saw semen, right? He was once, he was considered somebody that his carry was not going on his Tuma. So maybe he doesn't have the stringencies of a, a carry. Ella davar akar garam lo kamash malan. Therefore, you need me to teach you that. So the Gemara question is: Midi below davar akar ksev. Why would we think that? Why would we think Mikra Lila teaches me only if you become a tummy through carry through sperm? Uman tana the shamile the amar. So now the Gemara backtracks for a second. We're trying to figure out who is the author of this brisa. Who's the one who says, right, this whole price is assuming Shikva Zera, sperm, um, is something which is Metami Bamasa. It's Tami with Maga and Masa. Also, but carrying it. Lower Belezer of Yeshua. It's not the two popular Tanai, the most famous Tanai, the Belezer of Yeshua. This non, Shikva Zera, the mission says, Shikva Zera. Shall zab metame maga and metame masa dibi rebelazer. Shikha zero is someone who's a zab. It's metame by touching it, but not through carrying it, right? So that's definitely not a rebelazer. Rebel Yeshua Omer, af metame masa. Rebel Yeshua says, no, it is metame masa through carrying it. Lefishi yem shar below sechsuche ziva, because when you have sperm, you have semen in there. And a lot, most of the time they go together. So you see, according to Yeshua, it's only because you have the ziva. I've kind of looked over Yeshua, awesome, and all the shi'af shar below sechsuche ziva, because it in every sperm, you have some, some semen. Halab hachi lo. However, if it's not true, so nobody holds that the, the opinion the Gemara thinks at this point that just by emitting sperm, if you're a zav, just by emitting sperm without any semen, no one would think that you actually are matami the masa through carrying, through through moving something. Ella hai tanahu. The brisa is the opinion of another mishnah, the snan. This is a Mishnah, I believe, of Sechus Kalim. Lamala Mehen, on top of Chafem and Bey's 25b. Zobo Shal Zav. The Zobo Shal Zav. <coughs> the semen of a Zav. Viroko and his spit. The Shifa Zaro. And also his sperm. Umeme Rabla, his urine. Vidam Hanido. And also Dam of a workman who's menstruating. Metamin. Bein Mamaga, Bein Mamasa. So you see clearly, this is an opinion of this other third Tana, not really Zerim Yeshua. That's Metame through carrying. So the Gemara says, maybe it's not a third opinion. Maybe this is just the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua. And the Shekhva Zerah is Metame because it has some Zap in it. In Cain, so the Gemara says, no, it can't be. It should say, it says, Zovo Shal Zav. And then it interrupts, and it says, Roko, his spittle. The Shikva Zaro. First, it should, say, it should say Shikva Zaro next to Zovo. The reason it doesn't say that is to show they're two different things. Maishan Nihani Lagabi Roko. Why did it write it after Roko? is spit. El Mishum, the Asimi Roko. Because it comes from his spittle, meaning it's it's dissimilar to the semen, something else. Amal Ravacha Medivti the Ravina. Ravacha Medivti says to Ravina, Vaha Hai Tana Lo Darish Dayo. This Tana, right, whose opinion we just saw, um, he doesn't darshan dine, he doesn't use dial. 
Even in a case where Kabbalah Chomer would teach us something new, Kabbalah Chomer has to teach us something new. That's all Rabbi Tarfon's point in the Mishnah. If the Kabbalah Chomer is not teaching us new, something new, we have to, we, we can't use Dayo. But if it's teaching us something new, then we can use Dayo. So is there a third opinion that will legitimately say that we won't use Dayo even if we knew something already? Um, even if it's teaching us something new, we won't limit it? We, we, we won't say Dayo at all? We just let the Kabbalah Chomer teach us completely, completely new things? Uh, the Sanya, the Brisa says, Mapat the Mace Minayan. The Brisa, we're going to see this, this Brisa talks about this. Mapat the Mace Minayan. How do you know that a Mapats, which is basically, uh, it's basically a mat of reeds? I don't know why you would sit on a mat of reeds, unless you're a really poor person. Uh, Mapat the Mace Minayan. How do you know a dead a corpse tumor? A dead person, a person who's dead, he has severe tumor. He's Matame a Mapat. Minayan. How do you know that it's going to be Matami the Mapats? Now, Mapats can become Tame through touching. Obviously, if the corpse touches it, it becomes Tame. But what about also if the person is on a mattress and there's a reed underneath it, right? You have the frame of the bed underneath it is a bunch of reeds. How do you know that by Medras, by leaning on it, he's also going to be Matame? How do you know? But Dinu logically makes sense. If Mapach and Tatanim, let's see, have really small jars, earthenware jars that have a very small hole on the top. Shitahoda Mizav. Right, a zav can't make them tummy. You can only make something tummy like by a zav will make it tummy by putting his finger in there. And the hole is very small. He can't fit his finger in there. Metame b'meis. However, a corpse tumor, you can take a little bit of a corpse, a kazayas, a small amount, and put it in, in the in the pachin time, during one of vessels. Mapas, shemetame b'zav. Mapas, shemetame through a zav. That's clear in the Torah. A zav has the ability, of, even by leaning on it, to metame the mapas. This bed of reeds. Eno din she yitame b'meis. Certainly, it should matame b'meis. Certainly, the stringency should apply. That a mace, also leaning on a mace, a dead man, he was lying in his bed overnight and he died, and they have a reed um, frame underneath it of wood. Right? Maybe that's the best type of bed. You know, you don't need a box frame. You need a mat of reeds. Um, how do you know he's also going to tam it? So he said the, to the Bryce that says it also becomes tam it by leaning on it. Now that's not such a chiddush, but the chiddush of not invoking Dayo is to say not only is it matame for one day, right? And then one sun, when you go to the mikvah, you bring it to the mikvah, and then you immerse the, 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 the bed of reeds in the mikvah. And then you go ahead and um, wait till Shkia Sacham, till the sun sets. Then it becomes taller. Maybe you need seven days. How can we do this? Right? This is basically breaking all the laws of Kabbalah Chomer. We just extend it indefinitely as much as the Torah allows. We see elsewhere in the Torah is a concept of seven days of Tumor. We don't find elsewhere there's more than a concept of seven days of Tumor. Let's make it the full stringency. So, the Kabbalah Chomer worked partially. It worked partially that the the reed, the, the bed of reeds, should be tame for at least one night. Vahani, dayo lafuke tuma shiva, and dayo comes and says, "Let's limit it, not seven days." Amar leis, he said back to him. Kfar Rama nehalay Rav Nachman ba zachar leabayim. Nachman zachar asked this the same question to Abaye. Vamal Abaye, Abaye said to him, "Tana mimapetz b'sheres ma'isila." Abaye said, "The author of the brisa." He didn't learn it. He learned it from Mavas Besheretz, my Siva. He wasn't learning it like the, like the, the words above. He was learning from Sheretz. Sheretz is one of the eight creepy, crawly rodents that are mentioned in the Torah. That when they die, they have more severe tumor than any other animals. This is what he meant to say. Mavas Besheretz, Minayan. How do you know Mavas? Not from a, a dead person. To a Sheretz. If a Sheretz, a rodent, right? A mouse or something like that. His Matame is dead. And it's found leaning on the, this bed of reeds, Minai. How do you know it, it makes it tummy? It makes the reed, the bed of reeds tummy. But then, it's logical. Not pachin tanim, shtorim bizav. Certain small earthenware containers that have a hole on the top, small hole on the top. A zav, if he carries them, it's not going to make them tummy because he can't fit his finger in there. It's made in besheretz. They're metame by a sheretz. Because a sheretz, metame be kadasha. You have a small piece of the sheretz, even a lentil. Amount falls in, it would make the pachin tanim tummy. 
Ela mapa. Uh, where are we? That we know in the Torah is Tame if it comes if a Zav leans on it. Ain't no din shay Tame Bisharitz. Certainly it should be Tame with the Sharitz. El Mapat bin Mace me nayan. So why do you know Mapat's a mace? Even though the Bryce before said Mapat's a mace, he's really fixing what the Bryce is saying. Mapat's a mace, how do you know that? Nemar, it's not a Kava Homer, we're gonna learn it from Xera Shava. Xera Shava is where it says the same word in two different Sokin. And that's how we know it. It's not through a Kava Homer. It's through a Xera Shava. Nemar beged or b'sharetz. It says beged or by a sharetz. The word beged or beged is a cloth or is leather of a sharetz. And Nemar beged or a mace. It says both of those are by a mace also. Ma beged or a amar b'sharetz ma pats tami bo. Just like a sharetz we saw before, this this is irrefutable that a sharetz is metami. It says directly in the Torah. Af af beged or amar b'shem mace ma pats tami bo. So too by beged or a cloth or a piece of leather. Um. By a mace, um, right? Our tummy by mace. That says explicitly in the Torah. So we learn through the Gzera Shava, not a Kava Chomer Gzera Shava. When you learn through a Gzera Shava, there's no concept of diet. There is only you only Kava Chomer. It limits Kava Chomer. The Gzera Shava is just whatever it says in one place. The, the rule applies somewhere else. So, uh, so therefore, begim or a mace, ma begim or amor b'sharet ma abetz tamim. Ma begim or amor b'mace, ma abetz tamim. So, so therefore, by a mace, similar a corpse on a bed, leaning on a bed of reeds, would also matame. So the Gemara first interjects for a second to make sure it's a valid zero shavu to learn mofna. It has to be that begiv or those words begiv or are free. They're not used for they're extra words. The long mofna equal a mifra. If they're not free, then you have the following question: Mala sheretz shekei matame. You can't compare sheretz to a mace because sheretz, in some ways, is more is more stringent. Why is that? Mal sheretz shekei matame kadasha sheretz. The length, the size of a lentil is matame. Tomer a mace matame bekadasha. A mace you need a kizayis, which is bigger, an olive amount. Ella bekizayis on a kizayis laai. So the Gemara says, in which direction? Afnuy mufne. It is mufne. It is extraneous. Michti sheretz it kisu shechvazera. Sheretz is compared. They're written next to each other, juxtaposed to shechvazera, the sperm. The chsiv oish sheretz is men to men of shechvazera. The psalm nechle next pasuk oish sheretz yigab bechal sheretz. So Sharet is, is juxtaposed in the Torah to Shechazera. The Chsiva is Shechazera. Shechazera is the Chol Bege Bechor. Asher al Shechazera. So that's another one of the Yud Yom Mitos juxtaposition. It's written next to each other. So therefore, since it says Bege Bechor by sperm, so Bege Bechor also would apply to a Sharet. Why does it say um so why did the Torah go ahead and write it again by a sheretz? So it's extraneous to free up for this Xerah Shava to the corpse. So the Torah says, that's only extraneous from one direction, Xerah Shava. That makes sense if when you, there's the Mandam, the opinion will hold Xerah Shava, that you can continue the Xerah Shava as far as you want um, and don't ask questions on it if one side is extraneous. But according to the one that says you need it to be extraneous in both cases, otherwise we can ask questions. Like we ask a question, you can't compare Sharetz to Mace because Sharetz is more stringent than if Matam and Bekadasha through a um, uh, size of a lentil. So what are you going to say according to that opinion? The mace nami afnui mufna. So the Mara says mace also is afnui mufna. The words are exchanged there over there also. Michti mace is kish l'shich vazera. A mace is juxtaposed shich vazera. The chsiv ganoge bechal tami nefesh. Oh, she should each her a share tetsiv menu. I think the next word is shich vazera. The chsiv is shich vazera. Right. So it talks about tami nefesh is a dead person, and then it talks to the pasuk juxtaposed shich vazera. We just saw a Sheikh Vazara. It says the words Begad and Or. Asher Yala Sheikh Vazara. Begad Or, because of one of the maze, Lamo. Why does it repeat the same word by, uh, by a dead person? Shmamina Laf Nuye. To show you that both Begad and Or, both by a Sherid and a maze, are extraneous. So therefore, you learn Xero Shava. It's not a question anymore about Dayo, because it's not a Xero Shava anymore. It's not a Kava Homer, it's a Xero Shava. So that answers all our questions. Um, so there's no opinion. Rabbi Tarfun is the most. 
is he he does not invoke Dio sometimes. Ramon always invite invoke Dio. No one invokes Dio. Um, no one does right. Everyone invokes Dio. Ritarfan will invoke it sometimes, and Ramon will invoke it all the time. But there's no opinion that will never invoke Dio. And that's what we proved over here. So the Gemara just shores up one more point. The Gemara says, "Hanichal man da'amar din don we na ba'uki ba'asra." We make a gzera shava. When I learn from one place to another, from sheretz to mace, so I put it in the framework of whatever that law is talking about. If I'm learning from sheretz to mace, I learn about halachas that apply to a mace. I can play around with the gzera shava. According to the opinion, it, says it has to be exactly the exact law you're learning from one place has to be in the other place. You can't learn the full thing. You can't learn the full thing that it's metame the mapets. That's what we learned that a mace is metame the mapets. I'm a rava. I'm a krab. Right? Because we wanted to learn not just too much error, but also seven days. How do you know it's seven days? Maybe oh, like a sherit. Sherit's not metame more than one day. Right? A mace could be metame for seven days, but how do we know that? If you say don't we know, we know, it has to be the exact same learning. So therefore, the pasuk says, "You should wash your clothes on the seventh day." This is a pasuk by Tumas Hamais, and it's a general pasuk. Um, and big dechem is plural to teach you any time. Any time you find the concept of tuma, it's for seven days by Hamais. So therefore, we learn that a mace also is metamic for seven days, even by mappets, even if it touches, even if you if you sleep on a bed. And underneath you have a wooden mat. I mean, that's the best type of body. You know, no coils, no box springs. Just use a wooden mat. Torah tells you all the wisdom of the world. Enjoy the world better. We'll stop over here. I'm a little out of sync. 36 minutes to do my dafyomi year. used to take me 25 minutes, but I'm happy to get back on track. I hope you enjoyed. Four thumbs up. <laughs> We'll see an Elon Ben Sion coming up next, where I talk about um, the Machlokas or Itar from the Rabbanon. What are they arguing about? I know they're arguing about logistics, but what are they really arguing about when we say that Chatsi Nezek, um, is it Chatsi Nezek or Nezek Shalim, if you do carrying, if the animal cores on purpose in the Rosh Hashan, ha, Haniza, in the, in the in other person's property? I'll explain the Machlokas. Logistics. Not technicalities. Ian with Ben Sion coming your way next.